All right, if you're like me, then you've probably heard about web accessibility a million times, and maybe you've seen some preachy Twitter user say that web accessibility is your moral duty, and you're a bad person if you don't have web accessibility in your website. But for me personally, I just didn't care that much about accessibility just because it seemed like so much work for so little results. So my thinking was, okay, maybe if you're a multinational corporation who has millions of dollars to spend on web accessibility, then it could be important. But for just some small business website, some small to medium sized websites that I was making, I just didn't feel like it was worth it. And that's because I would come across these gigantic lists right here with every single thing that you need to do in order to make your website accessible. And as you can see here, this is just a humongous list. I could scroll down on here for days. And for just a solo developer maybe, uh, this just looks extremely overwhelming. Nobody has time to do all of this unless I have millions of dollars to spend. But basically this is just why I didn't care about web accessibility that much. Okay, I get that it's important, but maybe I'm running a business and maybe 0.1% of the visitors to my website are actually going to be blind and require a screen reader. And doing all this work just for an additional 0.1% of sales just didn't seem worth it to me at all. So I didn't really get it. Sure, it could be worth it if you have millions of dollars to spend, but for me, I personally never bothered. But in this video, I want to dispel a couple of myths. And the first one is just that web accessibility is really hard to implement. So of course, if you look at that list and every single item that you need to do, it looks really difficult. But honestly, you can get most of the way there just with minimal effort, almost no effort at all, just by following a few principles basically. And while perfectly following every single guideline to a T might be way too much work, you can get most of the way there just by doing a very small amount of work. And I'll show you in this video what you can do in order to get the best bang for your buck as far as web accessibility goes. And another myth I want to bust in this video is just that web accessibility only helps people with like severe disabilities. Maybe somebody who's completely blind and needs a screen reader in order to read a web page. Maybe somebody who has very little motor control and can't use a mouse at all. So those are the edge cases of course, but accessibility can help a whole lot of other people along the way. And let's start with just one basic example. So I have this website over here. It's not very accessible. And let's start off with one of the most basic things we can change. So this text right here, it's pretty difficult to read. Even with 2020 vision, it is pretty hard to read this. I have to really get in there and squint in order to read this. Even if you're watching this in 1080p, it's probably still pretty difficult to see. And that's just because the color contrast here is very low. So this is basically gray text on a gray background, which makes it pretty hard to see. Okay, maybe it looks cool. I know that gray text on gray backgrounds is very trendy and it looks cool, makes your website look very sophisticated, but it's just not good for the average person to read. That and it's just also very small. So if somebody with 2020 vision like me has trouble reading this, just imagine how this is going to be if you don't have perfect vision. It's going to be a lot worse. And so one very basic, Thing that we can do to fix this is just to well, bump up the font size. Let's say we want to make this 18 pixels. Let's change the color to something more black. And let's change the background color to something more white. Let's go through and change this header as well. And let's even do the button while we're at it. So let's save all of this. And instantly this is much easier to read. I can even go the extra mile and add a little bit of line height to this. Let's say 1.5. And now everything's spaced out and it's just much easier to read. So I no longer have to stare and squint at this page in order to read the text. And it's just better for everyone. Not just people with vision problems, just an average person like me as well. So that was very easy to do and it didn't really require much work at all. Basically all you need to do in order to do this is just keep this in mind whenever you're designing your website. Just to give your colors here enough contrast, make the text large enough in order to read it easily. And let's talk about another easy thing to do and that's adding alt text to your images right here. So you've probably heard this before that you should add an alt tag to this. So just imagine that I don't have anything right here, just a blank alt tag. And so screen readers can't come through and read this image, so they would have no idea on what this image is actually trying to convey. But this doesn't only just help people with screen readers, it also helps your SEO as well. 
So whenever a search engine like Google is crawling your website, it also crawls the alt text of your images, basically in order to see what they are. So if you enter a descriptive alt text right here, you could just say man standing on cliff, or if you want to be even more precise, and you can add man with backpack standing on a cliff. And basically the more descriptive you are, the better it will be for your SEO. And of course it'll help people who use a screen reader to browse your website as well. And going through and labeling every important picture with an alt tag is really not all that much work. It takes maybe five seconds to think of a good title for it. So this is another thing that you can add with minimal effort. Another thing that you can do is to use the right kind of tags in the right situation. So for this button up here, I basically just used div and then styled the div. But there are better HTML tags that we can use. Instead of a div, we could actually make this a button. So let's change this. And maybe the styling is a bit different. Maybe you have to alter a few styles in order to make it look right. So that could be a bit more annoying than just using a div. Let's say font size inherit. Now it's looking correct. But it's not just something like that. You can also do something like change this div to be more descriptive, like call it a section instead of just a div. Of course, we can change this div to be a footer instead of just div. And already you've made your website more accessible. And adding these semantic HTML tags will also improve your SEO as well. A lot of these tips will just improve your SEO as well because Google ranks these as well inside its algorithm. Another important item is also to be able to use your keyboard to navigate your website. So if you tab through your website right here, are you able to see where you are on the page whenever you tab? So I'm tabbing and I'm not really getting any visual indicator where I am at in the page. So that's because I actually disabled all the outlines right here. So naturally by default, these will all have a little blue border around them, or in this case black I guess. So as you can see, it kind of puts a little border around these, which is very useful if you're using your keyboard in order to use the website. It doesn't have to be just for people with disabilities. Some people just like using their keyboard. So you can style the outline for sure, but don't just remove it completely. Another simple one that also applies for SEO is to use your H1, H2, H3, all of your heading tags properly. So you should only have one H1 per page. This will be your main heading. And then go through the other headings, but don't skip numbers. So as you can see, I don't have any H2 in here. So just change this to an H2 so we're not skipping H2. Now we can have another H3 down here somewhere. But basically you just don't want to skip through headings. You want to have all the numbers descending. Another small one is to just use labels right here. So if you have a label for a form, don't just wrap it in a div because it's not actually the same. You'd want to change this to a label. And let's say for email right here, change this. And then let's change this as well. Let's say for message. And this will make it more accessible as well as just making it nicer because now you can click the labels and it actually goes to the text box. So a lot of these accessibility things are just basically the right way to build your website. A lot of people try to reinvent the wheel by maybe like turning a div into a button or using all these other weird hacks that you might see. So basically just try to keep everything as it should be. Use the proper HTML tags. They're all there for a reason. And if you're using some weird hacky CSS or JavaScript in order to completely change the behavior of some normal HTML element, then you might be doing it wrong. And finally, I'll just leave you with one last tip, and that's to always have text inside a button or a link. So as you can see, this is a link to YouTube, but a screen reader would not actually know this because there's nothing that says YouTube. It is basically just an icon right here, and so that wouldn't help anybody who's reading this with a screen reader. And so if you want to have a button or a link that doesn't contain any text in it, what you can do is basically add a ARIA label right here and then say YouTube channel or something like that. And then the screen reader will actually be able to read this so people don't have to guess at what this icon is if you can't see it. And so all of these things that I've shown you in this video really take no time at all. You just have to be conscious of them. So adding this label was not a huge amount of work and making a button an actual button is not a whole lot of work either. So while you might not be able to do every last accessibility guideline as outlined in something like this, because some of them are pretty hard to do for a small website, maybe you're running a podcast, and according to these guidelines, you have to have a transcript for every single podcast episode. 
if you have hundreds of episodes and you're just one person, that could be way more work than you're willing to do. But just by doing some simple things like this, I think you will get most of the way there. And of course, it helps everybody. As you can see, it helps everybody read this text. It helps your website be better SEO optimized so you can rank higher in search engines. So basically, it's just a win-win-win situation. And instead of accessibility being something like, okay, I guess I gotta do this. I don't wanna do this. This is gonna be a big hassle, but I guess I'll go ahead and make my site accessible. Instead of that, it's just something I do now. So whenever I add an image, I just automatically add an alt tag. I don't even really think of it anymore. It's just a habit I have now. And so hopefully this video will have helped you improve your web accessibility without losing your mind going through some giant checklist like here, trying to make your website absolutely perfect. Just something like this and you're already doing great.